Okay, calculus. Uh, here you go. Uh, this is the real deal. So this is the real feel for the AP exam. So if you get 50% of these right, you're doing pretty good. These are all derivative problems, which you should know how to do. But let's admit it, we don't know how to do them all. And that's why we're practicing right now. Um, I miss you guys. I'd much rather be here teaching you than in the horrible state of Wisconsin. But that's whatever. That's how life goes. Make the most of it. Uh, the first one, you should notice that you should have used the product rule. I hope that you use the product rule. Hopefully everybody got this one right. So product rule. And so you got the derivative of x is 1 times sine of x plus x times the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So simply sine of x plus x cosine of x. So yes, uh, the answer is in fact letter B. Hopefully you all got that one right. Now we need to take y prime. Uh, you should see the chain rule in this situation. So we have u to the fifth, and we have x cubed minus cosine of x. The derivative of x cubed minus cosine of x is 3x squared plus the sine of x. And the derivative of u to the fifth is 5u to the fourth. So we get 5 times x cubed minus cosine of x raised to the fourth power times 3x squared plus sine of x. So, yeah, that's another good one to get um, right there. So right now you're feeling pretty good about yourself because some of you guys are two for two. Good for you. Let's break your spirits. The derivative of f of g of x. I guarantee you're going to get one like this on the test. That says you need to use the chain rule, which says the derivative of the outside with the inside left alone times the derivative of the inside. That's what we're looking at. So uh, g prime is equal to 3. So at x equals 3, g prime of 3 is 3. So we got that. And then we're going to find g of 3. g of 3, if you plug 3 into the function, you get 7. So now we find it, need to find f prime of 7 multiplied by 3. In order to find f prime, I need to use the chain rule. u to the 1 half. Uh, x squared minus 4, derivative is 2x. I've got 1 over 2 roots of u. Multiply, you get x over the root of x squared minus 4. Plug in 7, you get 7 over the root of 7 squared is 49, minus 4 is 45. Multiply, you get 21 over the root of 45. Simplify that. Uh, 21 over 3 roots of 5, 7 over the root of 5a. Good. Number four, I guarantee you're going to have at least a couple problems like this on a test. Um, you talk about motion and position. Uh, this is the position, and it says for which of the following is the particle at rest. That's when v of t is equal to zero. So x of t is, if I multiply it out, t squared minus at minus bt plus ab. So therefore, v of t is, I have to take the derivative of that which is 2t minus a minus b. When is that equal to 0? When is 0 equal to 2t minus a minus b? Add the a and b over to the other side and divide by 2. And we get a plus b divided by 2. Letter b is your result. I know you're thinking that that was a difficult one. Um, you know, we're, we're getting to the difficult ones yet, so just hang in there. All right, functions defined by f of x is x over x plus 2. Uh, we need to find uh, what point is the line going to be tangent have a slope of 1 half. So you, as you think about this problem, question is when is f prime equal to 1 half? That's what we need to answer. So first find the derivative of that. Quotient rule. Derivative of the top, 1 times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, 1 over the bottom squared. So those cancel, I get 2 over x plus 2 squared. You're wondering, when is that equal to 1 half? Well, cross multiply, I get 4 is equal to x plus 2 quantity squared. Solve that, and you get plus or minus 2 when you square root both sides equal to x plus 2. Subtract the 2, and x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2. If you take negative 2 plus 2, you get 0. Negative 2 minus 2, you get negative 4. If you plug 0 into the original, you get 0. If you plug negative 4 into the original, you get 2. So it's going to be 0, 0, and negative 4, 2. 
I should graph it to confirm my answer. No, this is not a calculator problem. You have to know how to graph it, x over x plus two. But you, you can do that and come up with uh, you know a couple of results that kind of confirm your result. This one's a little bit more difficult. If uh, x plus two y times dy over dx equal to x minus y, two x plus y, what's the value of uh, d two y over d uh, x two? So that means the second derivative. So this is the first derivative, or y prime. This is the second derivative, or y double prime. That's what that means. So I want to find y double prime. Well, first I'm going to say that dy over dx is 2x minus y over x plus 2y. So that's my first statement. That's the derivative. I simply divide it over. Now I'm going to use the quotient rule, and I have to use implicit differentiation. So I'm taking derivative of y. If I do that, the derivative of the top is 2 minus y prime times the bottom x plus 2y minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 1 plus 2y prime times the top 2x minus y. Oh boy, I'm running out of space there. Over the bottom is x plus 2y quantity squared. So we're wondering what is the value of the second derivative at 3, 0. So that means I need to plug in 3, 0. First, I need to figure out what y prime is. So if I plug 3 into here, I get 6 minus 0 over 3 plus 0, which is 2. So y prime is 2. So we plug that in, you get 2 minus 2. Now for x, we'll plug in 3 minus 0 minus 1 plus, plug in 2 for y prime, you get 4 times um, what we got? We got 2x minus y, so uh, 6 minus 0 all over 3 squared. Well, that's 0, and I get negative 5 times 6 over 9, or negative 30 over 9, or negative 10 over 3. Negative 10 thirds is the correct answer. Okay, next one, what is the, this is the position, what is the acceleration when the velocity first is equal to zero? Well, the velocity is the derivative, which is uh, cosine of t uh, plus sine of t. So when is that equal to zero? Well, I've got to solve that. If we subtract sine of t, we get negative sine of t equals cosine of t. We divide by cosine on both sides. We get negative tangent of t is equal to 1. When is tangent equal to 1? Well, tangent's equal to, I'm sorry, ne <clears throat> so negative 1 because it becomes positive. When is tangent negative 1? At 3 pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4. So we're going to use 3 pi over 4, and it says, what is the acceleration? That's the second derivative. The second derivative is, derivative of cosine is negative sine of t uh, plus cosine of t. If you plug in 3 pi over 4, negative sine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root of 2 over 2, and the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is also negative root of 2 over 2. So you get negative 2 roots of 2 over 2, or negative root of 2. So I know all of a sudden that the problem was a lot more painful. Just to understand that not a lot of people get that right. And also notice, this is not a calculator problem. You're not allowed to use a calculator at all in that portion of the test. So, um, and I know right now you're saying, I don't remember my trig. I must have had a horrible teacher last year. Uh, we all know you guys had me. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. This is just, it's where we're at. And uh, we got to embrace it, try to work through it, and just remember what we can remember. So um, next one. This looks like a complicated problem, uh, possibly the second easiest problem on the test. The graph of y equals e to the tangent of x minus 2 cross the x-axis at one point. What is the slope? This is 100% a calculator problem. You turn it on. Make sure that you are working in radians and type in E 
raised to, oh, get rid of all that, sorry about that, e raised to the tangent of x, and I subtract 2. So I look at the graph, it says that it crosses between 0 and 1, it crosses at, at one spot. I must have a, a weird graph going on here. I'm going to uh, zoom standard and, and get back to normal graph. Sorry about that. It says it crosses the x-axis between 0 and 1. I'm going to find that spot. I can see it right there. And the way I find that is second calculate 0. I'm going to find that spot. Left bound, right bound, enter. So it turns out that it happens that x is equal to 0 0.60611. The question is, what's the slope of the graph at that spot? Well, I could use my calculator. It's easy to find slope using my calculator. Second calculate. Number six, dy over dx. You just type in 0 0.6061, and you get 2.96. So, again, that's, I know it looks challenging. It's really quite an easy problem. Problem number nine, 10, 11, and 12. Hopefully, this is a little bit easier. Find the derivative. Got to use the product rule. Let's see if you got the product rule going. We've got x minus, our derivative of x minus 1 is 1 times x squared plus 2 raised to the third power plus x minus 1 times, now I need the derivative of x squared plus 2 raised to the third power. Well, I got 3u squared, I got 2x, multiply them, I get 6x times x squared plus 2 quantity squared. Now, the AP exam is going to have you factor this out. We factor on x squared plus 2 quantity squared. What do you have left? I have an x squared plus 2. And uh, plus an x minus 1 times 6x. If you distribute this, you get 6x squared minus 6x. So you have x squared plus 2 quantity squared times 6x squared. x squared is 7x squared. We got a minus 6x. We got a plus 2. So it looks like. Uh, I've got uh, letter D right there. That's where you're rolling. Okay. Got 12 minutes in. Uh, let's see if we can finish this off. If f of x is cosine of x, no, this is not a calculator problem, then f prime of pi over 9. Well, f prime of x, you guys all know, is going to be negative 3 sine of 3x. You must use the chain rule. Plug in pi over 9, you get negative 3 times the sine of 3 times pi over 9 is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. And you guys all remember that that coordinate is 1 half root of 3 over 2. So negative 3 times sine of the y value, root of 3 over 2. Negative 3 roots of 3 over 2. Again, I know you're not remembering your trig, but let's pretend like you do. Okay. Number 11, uh, implicit differentiation. Great problem. We got the sine of u, uh, xy. Derivative of sine of u is cosine of u. Derivative of xy, I've got y plus xy prime. Multiply x plus xy prime times the cosine of xy is equal to derivative of x is 1. Distribute the cosine, y cosine of xy. And I know some of you are saying that you want to um, divide by cosine on both sides to get secant. Uh, they don't write the answer as secant, so it looks like we're going to have to distribute it. They're not as smart as you guys are. 1 minus y cosine of xy. Then divide, and I get y prime is equal to 1 minus y cosine of xy all over x cosine of xy. Cool. C letter D. And the last problem. What is the slope of line tangent to the curve? Find the derivative. 6y, y prime minus 4x is equal to 0 minus product rule. 2y plus 2xy prime. So 6y, y prime minus 4x is equal to negative 2y minus 2xy prime. Gather your y primes on one side. 6y, y prime plus 2xy prime is equal to 4x minus 2y. Factor out the y prime, you get 6y plus 2x is equal to 4x minus 2y. 
I know everybody's thinking you can divide by two. That's fine. You don't have to. It's totally up to you. Y prime is equal to 4x minus 2y over 6y plus 2x. So now we've got our derivative. So what are we going to do? We're going to use 3 and 2. So go ahead, plug in 3 for x. I get 12 minus, use 2 for y. I get 4 over, in the bottom it switches. Use 2 for y. I get 12. And use 3 for x. I get 6. Lo and behold, 8 over 18. That looks like a good old 4 ninths. Boom. Okay, hopefully you're humbled at this point. You realize you don't know all the math there is in the world. But if you know 50% of it right now, you're doing really good. You know, I would say, you know, if, if you look at it, there's five choices here. So out of 12, hopefully, hopefully you've got two. Um, you know, that would be just guessing. So, um, you know, these are real problems. And I picked out the ones that match to the derivatives. These are challenging problems. Um, if you want me to put more on the test like this, I can do that. But um, these are challenging, and uh, there's a reason why people don't always get it right. So, good job. I'll see you guys soon. Monday. Get your homework done. Get ready for the test. Test.